<laughs> Welcome to another edition of Friday at 420. I'm Mike Neighbors, the ambassador of Funny. It's great that you could be with us uh, though, over the next 40 minutes. We're going to try to make you laugh. We've assembled a panel of uh, local stand-up comics, and that includes, as usual, Mr. Patrick Capolino. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Patrick. Buongiorno. Uh, Manolis is getting up and leaving. Oh, no, he's getting closer to the microphone. I'm sorry. Manolis Santanos. Hey, how you guys doing? Ticanis. 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 Ticanis to you, too, my friend. Uh, and our uh, special guest comic this week coming all the way in from Delhi. Is that where you live in Delhi? Uh, yeah, just outside of it in the metropolis of Pine Grove. The, oh, Pine all Grove. the way from Pine Grove, Ontario. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pete Van Dyke. Thanks for having me, everybody. I feel oh, like we need to clap for some reason. Well, yeah, because I give it the big uh, announcer intro, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pete, it's great to have you with us. Uh, you've been uh, doing stand-up comedy for a couple of years now? Yeah, about three years just now. Just touring around, just playing, playing, you know, is there a lot of places to play in Delhi? Uh, no, no, there's not. <laughs> I actually uh, make a point of not doing it. I'm, I think I'm banned from the two places you can play comedy close to home. Okay. They've actually banned me from those locations. <laughs> I was too dirty for one, and then the other guy just doesn't like me. Oh, so, he just, yeah. he's, I don't like I should, that. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Okay. But it's, it's kind of like pooping in your backyard, you know, when yeah. you do comedy by home, especially if you're working out stuff. I like to only do stuff that I know is going to work at home okay. so that my neighbors don't look at me like <laughs> they feel sorry for me. <laughs> like they do in uh, Manolis place. Uh, so, hey, just kidding, Manolis. Uh, and you also have a podcast. You've been working at this for a while now. Tell us a little bit about the podcast. Yeah, Live from the Dutch Hall takes place in my pool shed in my backyard. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was a banker for about 15 years, and um, I left that world because uh, it was awful. Like, okay. it was really bad. <laughs> and then I uh, didn't know what to do, and then I started listening to podcasts, and then I just thought, like, what's uh, what's stopping me from yeah. doing one? And st- I started doing one. And it was really just an excuse to do stand-up um, where Every I didn't week. know there was a, any mics at right. the time, so I was just giving myself an hour a week to try to work out material. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then it kind of evolved where a band started showing up, and now we have the greatest band in Canadian late night history, the Nocturnal Emissions. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we also have uh, you know different guests that have come in every week. We've interviewed um, you know NHL hockey players and yeah. and CFL football players and Iron Sheik and. Uh, all kinds of uh, ba- different bands have been in, and, uh, and a lot of good, great comics. So. That's awesome, man. That's Still working awesome. on these two guys to get them in on the show. Well, I was going to say, it's a like quid pro quo. I mean, you're coming on our show. I guess we should all make a road trip out to Pete's Pool Shed and let's be on do his it. show. Yeah, you should. All yeah. three of us should go. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I love that idea. Oh, that'd be fun. Book us in. Yeah. Yeah. Live from the Dutch Hall. You can find it on iTunes. There's even a video version on YouTube if you'd like to see Pete's ugly mug. Uh, here's how the uh, game is played, Pete. Uh, since you're the first timer, you're going to get to spin first. We've awesome. got 12 random topics, and they are uh, in uh, Bell Media, official Bell Media envelopes. That's how you know they're official. Uh, it says Bell Media on them. And uh, we've got a wheel, and we spin the wheel. Uh, whatever number it lands on, that's the random topic you get. So, Pete Van Dyke, All right. give that wheel a spin. Here it goes. Oh, he really, really reefed on it, eh? Wow. Not, is that nine? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Or six. Oh, no. it's, it's messy. Six. It's messy there. All right, here we go. Random topic number one for Friday at 420. Patrick Capolino, Manolo Santanos, and Pete Van Dyke. Pete Van Dyke, are you married? Yes, I am. Yeah, okay. Married a long time? 20 years. Oh, yeah. you're going to have to try to remember this. 20 years? Best yeah. or worst pickup line you've ever used? Oh, I've never picked up a woman in my entire life. Oh, really? and that's the truth. <laughs> Everyone's picked me up. So I've never had one successfully work. I don't think I've ever really tried to get... Never had a line, never... No, never. They like, say the uh, best line is hello, but... Uh, I, just, I just use... Uh, my God-given good looks has been the only thing <laughs> that has gotten me any any sort of that's, tail in my life. That's man. awesome. Yeah, so it, it, no, I, I, you I were approached. About, but now that I'm married, you know, j- that was with single women, okay? But okay. now that I'm married, I would say, you know, I do have to uh, still pick up my wife. She just doesn't... And give me sex. No, you know? no. You have to. Uh, <laughs> you still have to earn it, you know. And in some way, so well, that would hit me close to home, Pete. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So like, it's not so much what I say, but it's like if I clean the garage or something like that. Oh. Like, I'm pretty much. So that's the a best lock. pickup line is. Doing, is like, a, uh, doing is there a anything chore, I can do doing, for yes, you? Yes, doing you know? something kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially Could, if it's something you really should have done. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's been bugging you about it. Yeah, you and would, then you knock it out of the park. Right now, you also it's you got to time it right though, because if you're like, like if you can see that her schedule's not lining up, or she you've, she's ju- you've just gotten laid like within a short period of time, <laughs> and then uh, so don't waste cleaning up the garage. No, then. no, you you spread that out, you know, till closer to a Sunday when it's building up, and then uh, <laughs> then you clean it, right? 
<laughs> Pete has anyway. got some. That's very wise advice. I know. It's you very know, deep. It is very, very deep. Manolo Santanos, best or worst pickup line, and you have tried a number of them. I I think I said one time I was like kind of, I was like kind of a date and then uh, we were shop she was shopping for something and she said uh, she said she's like it's, you never make me feel like I'm in a, we're in a hurry I said well it's hard to be in a hurry when you're exactly where you want to be oh my god oh. that's so that's so nice I would fuck oh, sorry. oh. Dang it. I'm so okay. sorry Mike that's all right you, can you mark it or something it, like, where yeah well listen <laughs> I'm if, sorry if I forget to get around to editing that out uh, we apologize. Yeah. Uh, go. Uh, so, so did it work? Yeah, she melted. Oh, she, she, <laughs> she was like, she literally she's like, melted. like, what did you just say? I'm like, I was like, I didn't, I couldn't believe I said it too. I was like, like it was so like it was just I, it came it came out perfect. I'm like, perfect. I'm like it sounds that. like you must have read that somewhere. I I, 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 it's just, I can't yeah. read. Felt it in the moment. <laughs> I can't read. Uh, uh, Pete, I take it there's uh, swearing allowed on the podcast. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right, man. No, I just yeah. I'm just double checking for <laughs> okay. when we visit. You're not yeah. the first. <laughs> no, no, you're not, and you won't be the last. Uh, Patrick Capolino, you, Mr. Rico Suave over there. No. Come on, you got first. You lay on the buongiorno. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just uh, whisper uh, different kinds of pastas with an Italian accent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, That's perfect. Mozzarella. <laughs> yes. Lasagna. Yeah, cup of coffee. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, there was one I used when I was younger, but I wouldn't dare repeat it on here. Oh, <laughs> also because I'm ashamed of it. But, okay. Um, I don't know. I'm. I don't know. What have All you right. heard me do? That's. I don't know. That's... I don't know what you do. Like, usually you're just drunk and start <laughs> said, making out with chicks. <laughs> yeah, it's usually just can I kiss you? That's it, man. That's a yeah. Can I kiss you? Yeah. Want to go halves on a baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're at Che, and we're at Che, and yeah, there's this girl that he wanted to talk to at the bar. I'm like, we're about to go. I'm like, do you want to talk to her or not? Like, make your, make. Your... He's like, I don't. Know. I'm like, go or not go. Make a decision. And he goes, and the next thing you know, he's making out with her, and now, now he has, now he has a daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I was gonna say that. But yeah, the, my the mother of my child. I'm pretty sure the pickup line was just like, "Can I kiss you?" <laughs> oh, what? perfect. That's what we were looking for. We're just uh, offering up advice to the audience. Yeah, I might can try I that. kiss you? Save uh, me trouble in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, yeah, no, then I cleaned her garage. Oh, that yeah. was it. it was done. Oh, there's no place I'd rather be than right here with you three gentlemen. Thank you. (laughs) Manoa, skip that wheel of spin, my friend. This is Friday at 420. Uh, Pete Van Dyke, our guest in the studio. Number seven. Number seven. Lucky number seven for Manoa. Let's see if it's lucky. Here we go. The psychic last week said this is going to be a big year for you, Manoa. I need a year. Any year. (laughs) Uh, Tell us about a dream and or nightmare. A dream? A dream? Do you dream? Do you remember your dreams? Are, are they colorful? Are they do you, you do they stick with you, or are they just kind of wake you up in a cold sweat? Uh, I have I, I can't I, I can't think of one in particular right now, but I always seem to have these dreams where I I fall right, and then I wake up just as I land. Oh, okay. You know, and and, and again, well, and I'm falling's like, a really regular. I, a lot of people have yeah. a falling dream, right? And I fall into. Do you ever feel like the weird thing is? Do you feel like you're going into the bed as you wake up? Like I feel like I'm like the bed's like catching me a bit too. Oh, when like you it's lay trippy, it. yeah. Right. And then I've, uh, I always seem like every like I don't have a lot of sex dreams, but I have a handful of them once in a while. <laughs> a handful. All, like go. Ever, <laughs> oh, no, that's it's not that, a dream. That was real. <laughs> yeah, I would like to have more of them. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like when I have we them, all like, would, brother. But they, my dreams are just as horrible as my life in the sense of like every time. I tell me if this happens to any of you, but every time it's just about to like not like I'm going to like release my fluids. Right. But right. I don't even get you don't even to get that far. I don't. Even, I'm just about to either like yes. have sex or yes. make out with yeah. this beautiful woman, and then boom, I just wake up. And, and it's a yeah. Yeah, my parents are, are talking to each other, <laughs> yelling at each other, or like the phone goes off. You can't I never, restart that dream. I can't get laid in my real life, <laughs> and I can't get laid in my fake life. Well, there it is. That's the nightmare we were looking for. Yeah. Uh, yes, that, absolutely. Yeah, it is a nightmare. Uh, Patrick Coppolino, uh, dream or nightmare that uh, jumps out in your mind when I say, what's your best, worst dream or nightmare? Um, I've had some terrifying dreams. Have you? Uh, do, you do you regularly murderous. dream? Uh, I've had <laughs> I've had more probably like a nightmares involve like 
being murdered or murdering really, than, eh? than most people probably <laughs> have. I don't know what that says about me. I don't but know. the one that stands out the most was like I was in this trailer park. I don't know why or, or how I got there, but um, I remember somebody somebody got murdered in a trailer and I walked in and I was the only one there and I picked up the weapon. And then as I picked that up, someone else walked in and saw me. So they thought I did it. Right. And then in my head, I'm like, well, I have to kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> but the, what the weirdest part about it, it was the, the weapon was, it was a bread knife. And I, I'll never forget that feeling of the, um, uh, of the, you know, the serrated blade yes. against the skin. Like, I, I still remember that feeling. Because that's a very soft serration, it, yeah. and it would have just been so hard to plunge that in. Yeah. So that <laughs> is probably my worst nightmare. That is that's crazy, man. You watch a lot of uh, Law and Order or something? Or, you no. Know, no, nothing like that? Any of those... Any of those cop shows they were, you know, the guy walks in as the guy standing there, oh, I didn't do it. Uh, next thing you know, I'm killing him with a bread knife. I don't know. No, no it's okay. just really in his head. Like, he's that messed <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Like, he thinks that stuff on he, his own with he's no living, help at all. No it help. actually happened. He wakes up and is like, <laughs> that was a dream. <laughs> hey, where did that bread knife go? Uh, Pete Van Dyke, uh, big dreamer, big nightmare guy. What are you? You know, I'm a big dreamer. I really am, and and I don't I don't have many nightmares uh, having anymore. I don't think, uh, but uh, you know, uh, sex dreams for me. I've been married 20 years, and and you know, you think that a sex dream would be an opportunity because I'm monogamist, right? To like uh, to not be monogamous, yeah. You know, but every but in time my dream, I will I will have <laughs> intercourse with a lady who I want to have intercourse with, like, and that'll be like, let's just say for the argument of like for the sake of argument that this girl's name, let's say it was like a um, who's a hot actress, like. A, Jennifer Aniston. Like Jennifer Aniston, right? So okay. So, so you're... let's say I want to have uh, intercourse with Jennifer Aniston in my dream, and I'm having, and I'll be like on the set of Friends, you know, <laughs> and uh, there'll be, and I'll be ready to have like sex with Jennifer Aniston, and then all of a sudden she'll turn her head to me, and it'll be my wife's face, like it's, and I you end can't up just, get away. No, yeah. I'll per, I'll think in my stupid dream that I'm having sex with Jennifer Aniston, but I'm not. I'm having sex with my wife, even in my dream. I can't you, cheat on her. You know what? And to all the ladies listening right now, they are in love with you, Pete. Really? They well, think that's fantastic. Well, they're not going right? to get laid by me. Because <laughs> he's with his wife. I can take care of that with a bread knife. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go to pull it out, it's a bread hey, knife. Hey, you know what? It could have been worse because uh, you could have thought it was Jennifer Aniston, and suddenly you saw Chandler's face. So, yeah. you know, I mean, wasn't the worst thing possible. Uh, Patrick Coppolino? Give the wheel a spin, my friend. Give the wheel a spin. Eight. (laughs) Number eight. All right. We are, uh, hang on a second. These are envelopes. They're getting a little sticky. Manolo, so you've been playing with the envelopes again. I'm Uh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Patrick Coppolino, where are you in five years? (laughs) (laughs) If not not dead. You know, it's important. And and the reason that we ask that is that, you know, I've, I've read a lot about goal setting and there's actually even a whole a body of work that says, let's say you wanted to buy a red Mustang, that you put a picture of a red Mustang on your fridge, and you are you have you are far more yeah. likely not because anything in particular happens, but doors open, you notice opportunities mm-hmm. if you have sort of thoughts in front of you. So yeah. we're putting, I want you to put a thought in front of you. I don't care how crazy it is. Five years from now, what are you doing? Um, well, I used to manifest things a lot more, a lot more right. specifically anyways. Okay. Uh, I think over the years it's boiled yeah. down to just not here in five years. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just anything I don't know but. If that's good or bad. Just an but anything but dream. Just not here. <laughs> and um, you don't mean here specifically with me and Manolas. No, just Hamilton. <laughs> Um, but no, I don't know. I see good things. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll yeah. be doing something. Is there new. something, you know, I mean, writing for TV, maybe, uh, getting a, you know, just doing stand up in LA doing, I mean, you've done some of that already. I mean, what, where would you like your career yeah. to go? That, uh, and filmmaking, a lot more filmmaking. Oh, filmmaking. Excellent. Um, and possibly maybe I'll be a celebrity chef by then. Who knows? <laughs> well, you can combine <laughs> filmmaking, celebrity chef, right? You can get your own <laughs> yeah. TV show. Damn it. There you go. All right. And you'll be cooking Greek food with uh, Manolis' dad. dad. We're doing that. Manolis yeah, Santanos um, in five years. Five years? Uh, where would you be? Where? What, what would you... If, if you could make it happen. Where, so where? I want... If the court cases are done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can leave the country. <laughs> uh, I would... I, was, I want either... I don't know. Either LA or New York or both going back and forth. Just so, and, and doing stand-up? Just doing stand-up, like yeah. Or something else? Or? I would love to get into any type of acting 
But like I, I'm gonna be like that if I get if I get into acting, it'll be like just them casting me. So I'm not gonna you be play like, yourself. In yeah, the role. like you know that it'll say Adam Sandler's the same guy in every movie. Right, I'm that guy. Okay, so like <laughs> you could be, you could play you. I'll be there's no there's spectacularly go, well. There's gonna be no range. It'll be like okay, we need. <laughs> Like we just need an idiot, and like I know a guy. You know, you know what? I I like that you're uh, you're at least very clear about I'll tell your you, talents. I, I'm very aware of my limitations. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I, I call I them talents. I, you I'm call just, them limitations. limitations. I'm just smart enough to know that I'm not smart. Right, right. <laughs> but, who was, who was that? A whole series of movies. What was the with the uh, the country bumpkin guy? What were those movies called? Ernest. Yes. So like uh, yes, Ernest. the new Ernest. There's a. <laughs> You know what he's like? You said put your thing, put Manola's something out there. To jail? Oh yeah. You know you put something out there in yeah. the universe. You're saying like a, like to, yeah. So I I did that with like how much money I I was like I wasn't greedy. I was put an amount amount of money on a piece of paper so I looked at it every day. Right. And uh, at for, at first I just the only reason I I didn't give up on it, but my dad saw it and my dad said, "Why is this? Why is this number here?" <laughs> I'm like, just I'm trying to put it on the universe, Dad. Sick, like, trying to get some money, and my dad's like, "You owe some money, but you owe someone money." I'm like, "Dad, I don't owe anybody money." It's like, is this a check? Is this a check? I go, "Dad, it's a piece of white paper with f- f- like five numbers on it." Like, what do you? So I ripped it up, and then I realized uh, I've got, I got, I did it. I got that. My, you you reached the milestone. I'm yeah. What the, that li- the number was? I got it. And then and then it, 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 gambled it all away or something. No, I have it still. Oh, like, oh. like, like, it, like I, I. Well, that's cool. But I realized after, like, all of a sudden, my friend pointed out to me, "Didn't you have a, like a mount written on a piece of paper?" I'm like, "Oh my god, yeah!" And it's like I'm like uh, just about, to, I'm like around the corner from that amount that I wrote down. Yeah. So now, so now what are you gonna do? I'm, Write a bigger amount. <laughs> Go to LA or New York, I guess. <laughs> You're there now. You said that. Listen, before we ask Pete Van Dyke where he sees himself in five years, we should reveal that, uh, Pete, you have just bought a church. Yes. So uh, tell us just a little bit about the church, because I, you know, I mean, we're kind of going down the road where we, in five years we see you as a, your own pastor and <laughs> handing out Kool Aid. But beyond yeah. that, uh, what, you, tell us about the church you bought in Delhi. Well, uh, it's a. It's, it used to be the old uh, Hungarian Presbyterian Church. is right across from the high school in Delhi. And it, the thing about Delhi is, is that um, I believe that uh, you know Toronto is. Uh, you know how Toronto used to have normal people live there and regular like like regular lives. Yes. And then it became too expensive. So now if a regular person wants to live there, they got to live in squalor. You yeah. know, to live <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. And and the, and then they eventually the regular people had moved to the suburbs, and then the suburbs became too expensive. Then they. Came to Hamilton, then eventually Brantford, and it just keeps rippling. Right? Eventually, yeah. they're going to come to Delhi. Sure, but right now, <laughs> Delhi is the is the end so, of the line, right? So, so, so five years may not be enough time, but anyway, <laughs> no. I, and so, right now, um, Delhi used to be a real a nice little town, and because it was built around tobacco money, and right. then uh, when the tobacco industry crumbled, the town did too, and it's it's pretty much bottom right out. Perfect time to buy, right? Absolutely. So, I ended up getting a really sweet deal on this church. Which is turns out it's acoustically sound, and uh, one of the sound engineer from my uh, podcast live from the Dutch Hall, he Kevin Belanger, he went uh, with me to look at it, and we we looked at the building, and it turns out it, with very little uh, to do to it, it's going to make a perfect recording studio. So we're gonna, we have bands all the time in through our uh, show. Awesome, so. Through those contacts, we already have some customers coming in to record. Well, and, and the reach in Delhi, I mean, you're in southwestern Ontario, right? And you reach out all those communities and stuff. I mean, if a band needs a recording studio or needs some kind of place to come in and, and perform, then then that's sort of a, it's a great spot. They'll drive, right? Yeah, and, and one so, good thing about it is we're building an artist residency in the back. So if they need to stay in town, cool. they don't have to go to the Delhi. Stay Motel for a few or, days, work through the new album or whatever. That's very yeah. cool, man. And we also, in the basement, we're going to be having uh, internet radio uh, and podcast studio and uh, as well as like... Uh, um, just just sets for um, for different media projects that we're doing. Are you renaming it the Dutch Hall? The basement of the church will be called the Dutch Hall. Okay. And uh, <laughs> my, my program is probably going to be moving to a Sunday night service there <laughs> at the church. <laughs> Live. But the uh, building itself will be re- is going to be called Spiky Ball Studios. And uh, the <laughs> con- because on the top of the church, there's this like... Uh, Real, like on the bell tower, like yeah. the steeple, I think it's called. It's got this really cool, like spiky ball, like a, I don't even like. It looks like a, a the top of a of a mace, you know? Right. Uh, and I, I looked it up. It's called a morning star. And because oh, okay. uh, you see that quite often in Russian old Russian buildings and stuff, and uh, in Middle Eastern buildings, you'll see those. 
Yeah, Morning Star or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyways, that's what they call it. But uh, th- those names are already taken, so I went with Spiky Ball. <laughs> and uh, Morning Star at Gmail was taken, so <laughs> yeah. I'm now Spiky Ball at spiky Gmail. Ball, Excellent. Yeah. And so, anyways, uh, we're pretty excited about getting it. We, I get it. Uh, well, right now, by the time this show goes out, I've yeah. been in it for about a month, That's and awesome. we're getting ready to plan some shows coming up. So go to Spiky Ball Studios or. SpikyBallProductions.com probably will have it by then. <laughs> Spiky Ball Productions. It's all a work in progress. Yeah, you can see what our schedule is of events. But, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it because uh, I think it's uh, it's a great opportunity for um, – since I started comedy, I've noticed that a lot of people are busy doing projects, really talented people. And we, I've had a lot of them on my show, like musicians and yeah. comedians. And uh, these guys are super talented. A lot of them went to school to pursue their career at their craft and they can't make a living at it yeah so uh and a lot of them are working out of their house doing it by themselves and and it's a pretty lonely pursuit a lot of people fall into depression a lot of people will uh just give up uh, uh, give up get into drug and alcohol problems and and whatever and what i feel this church will you're describing my co-host that's fantastic (laughs) (laughs) but my hope with the church is that this kind of gives them all a place to go yeah and we're working with a couple of charities that kind of tap into that in the music business but we're also kind of i'm actually looking for some kids who are like young comics in the making that are probably can't find a place where they fit in, Yeah, they can maybe fit in at the church. So that's I, the hope with what we're going to do. It's very, very cool. Uh, do you, uh, so in five years from now, that's going to be, it's going to be a hub of activity, of creative activity. Yeah. But Is that where you're going to be? I don't know if I'll be there. <laughs> Because my kids, I, I think I hope they have it up and running in five years yeah. where it's something good. But uh, I would, uh, in five years, my kids are going to be gone off to school and I want to be uh, gone too. Like, oh. I, I want to get the Hezek out of Dodge. You yeah. Know? And uh, I did, Norfolk County is awesome, but like, whoa, there's not much to see. And after a while, I, I kind of want to just go out. So I, I want to do Edinburgh in five years Okay. for the summer. Excellent. And uh, that's a five year goal. And all this, have you done Edinburgh? Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've done it. I've been there. Yeah, like, I was like, uh, but I just want, I was hanging out there for a week and right. went on a bunch of shows. Yeah, but what you gotta do is you gotta like, rent a place. Yeah, a hall yourself, like a venue. Put your own show on. Put your own show on for a month. So I haven't done that, and it's like it's kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah. So but if like, all four of us chip in, yeah, well, Friday that, at four twenty, live from Edinburgh. With it would Pete be Van Dyke. It'd be a smarter move though to do a combined show. If you did like four dudes all doing like say twenty minutes each. For like whatever, yeah, yeah. what is that? Like an hour and twenty? Yeah, you did just do that. That'd be yeah, it'd make a lot more fun for the summer. Yeah, and, you can and still work it's on your so stuff. expensive, man. And, yeah. and you'd have support. I mean, you'd have support built right in, right? So yeah. if you had, if you had a bunch of people that you were there with, yeah, yeah, totally. But if you don't, if you're not a big name, like a lot of the bigger names that are down there, like Ar- I think Ari Shafir's down there right yeah, now, this, right? Yeah, or was there this summer? And now. like, but he's big enough now that like he can get people to actually buy tickets or like, yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, was it Tom's Tom Stade's that did it this year and my buddy uh jared christmas and, and all amazing comedians from uh england yeah. but they're big enough now craig Campbell, they're all big enough now that people come but if you're not a guy like you or me yeah, yeah. we're gonna like we might lose our shirts so yeah. we gotta figure out a way to get people in some dude, will yeah dude, people will buy tickets to the spiky ball show <laughs> <laughs> no but i think that in five years to figure all those those uh problems out like to figure all those uh what's ever stopping it from working out or you know the 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 disadvantage of being a comic is that sometimes you do things that make absolutely no sense uh, from a monetary standpoint just because it's going to make you better it's necessary at yeah. what you do you know it's necessary. It's and step. in that case you know i would have to, i think it's like education like paying for it going on education but yeah. it's like the education lasts forever man and yeah. plus, plus we got all the money that Manolis wrote on his fridge. We can yeah, spend yeah. that. You know, I'll fr- I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what that about that fridge thing? I uh, with my podcast, I started f- uh, like f- almost five years ago now with no idea about anything. I, I, entertainment, uh, the internet. I didn't even use the internet. Like I was just so stupid about everything. And, and uh, but I was interested in it because it was like something that I knew that was going to be a big deal, but I didn't know anything about it. And uh, but I could see different things that were going to happen in my head, like the band. And I knew mm-hmm. the band would go fully electric, but they were an acoustic band before. It was just one guy on acoustic guitar, then it was two guys on acoustic guitar, then it was three guys. One guy played lead, and then they started using a cahoon, and then it was a drum kit, and then it was a bass player, and you know, and then now everyone's fully electric. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, it, I saw them as that fully electric band from the beginning, and I knew it was gonna get there, but I could tell them till I was blue in the face, but they didn't see it until yeah. it happened, you know? And I, a lot of things are like that, like I, I just, with 
I don't know if you see this with comedy or not, but do you have like uh, sometimes where you just have this like steadfast conviction that you know what you're doing where is it's the right going. thing yeah. to where the do, next step and is. it's yeah. you know that the next thing is and. Even though everyone's saying it doesn't make sense and you're not making money and nobody cares, it's still like, it just seems like it's still the right thing to yeah. do. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, and there's no other option for you. Yeah, you yeah. You have to do it, yeah. And even if, the, even if, I mean, there is options, obviously, not to do it. Because people no, say, but in you your mind, it? yeah, you but in my mind, I have to do, have to yeah, do it. That's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. Giving, and, giving and then you've got to explain to your wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the hardest part of all. I'm yeah. dreaming about you, baby. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has nothing to worry about. I cleaned the damn garage. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, this is Friday at 420. You're listening to uh, Friday at 420 with uh, Patrick Coppolino, Manolo Santonis, and our special guest, Mr. Pete Van Dyke, uh, live from the Dutch uh, Hall. Uh, Mr. Pete, it's your turn to spin the wheel, buddy. We're going to give this another go and take on a, another topic du Did jour. We do nine? Did we already do nine? Did we already do nine? Uh, no, we didn't. Oh, no, I take awesome. them out of rotation once they've been done. Uh, okay, we're going to share a little, uh, a little oversharing here. Uh, Pete Van Dyke, when I say this, I just want you to think, the first thing that pops into your mind, don't overthink this one. Okay. Most embarrassing moment. Oh. Oh. Jesus. Just uh, soul-crushing, embarrassing idea. All right, I need soul-crushing, embarrassing. Soul-crushing, embarrassing. All right. My, I was 12 years old. Uh, I don't know why this bothers me so much, but it does. Uh, I was 12 years old, and uh, my dad, we had horses and uh, on our farm, and we had to go to horse shows on weekends. It right. was something that uh, my dad and my sisters enjoyed, and I did not. I, I did not <laughs> like like those horses at all. And uh, I cleaned their stalls and stuff that was like not fun for me. So anyways, I went, and my dad wanted me to do well. I was 12, and a lot, and a lot of these categories were kids who were 12 and under. But I was like... A twelve-year-old farm kid, you know, you're you're not really a tw- you've been working for seven years, you know, yeah. like you've, you're you're yeah. uh, not really a twelve-year-old. No. You're kind of more grown up than that. And they put me in this uh, kids division called lead line barrels on horses. So that lead line means that your dad has to hold the the harness from the beginning and a lead line and run the barrels in front of you, right? And you're so, like, are you kidding me? Right. And yeah. I can ride a horse at this time. And yeah. so he's just doing it because he knows I'm a shoe in for the victory because he can run as fast <laughs> as he can. And he's just like, hold on, idiot. You know, if you can't <laughs> beat these little ch- children, you know, you're a loser, you know? And so uh, I Inspiring remember. Inspiring words from my no, dad. There's no uh, glory in victory. It's like uh, beating up a little person, you know? <laughs> it, you can't, uh, you know, even if, if the guy was tough and you beat him and you, and you felt like you accomplished something by being up like a dwarf or something, <laughs> you know, like uh, you would still know, like yeah. everyone's going to yeah. think you're picked on a dwarf, yeah. right? Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's kind of what this was like. Uh, I beat everybody <laughs> pretty handily. And then uh, I remember the last one, it was my little sister who's five years younger than me. She was uh, competing against me and uh, she beat me. I got second place. I had to go up on the podium like with two little kids and I'm not <laughs> at the top. <laughs> But even uh, the most horrifying moment was at the banquet when you had to go up and get your trophy, and uh, and they took a picture of me, and I'm at least a, f- a foot and a half taller than the next. <laughs> They're little kid, little babies, eh? Well, it was a, a now, humiliation. Did you could you could you say you threw it for your sister, or I mean, was there? No, I didn't have any choice in anything. I, I didn't want to be on the horse. I didn't have any didn't control over how there. fast it was going. It was my dad running. Like I just had to hang on and take whatever <laughs> whatever cook, he cooked up in his mind, which. He thought I would enjoy, I guess. Oh my! Like goodness. in retrospect, my dad probably thought he was doing a nice thing for me, you know. But like, I don't get. It. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, didn't, I, I didn't yeah. Get it. And all you've got left is this picture of you, <laughs> second place, yeah. oh, heads uh, and tails from above everybody Valley else. Show. Uh, that was excellent. That is soul crushing, embarrassing, and we appreciate you sharing that, Peter oh, thank Van Dyke. You. Uh, <laughs> and like a, Patrick and Manolo are looking at each Do other. I got, I got, Manolo has think, seven stories, so yeah, we, we really should get to that first. Uh, do you want to? Do you want a sex one or do you? Oh. Want, <laughs> I, mean, I get a or, choice. Yeah, or I, I could talk about kindergarten. Uh, oh, we, you know what? We've been down kindergarten road several times. I'm saying it's a okay, sex story. Se- All right, so the first time I, <laughs> this first time I had sex. Oh, really? Yeah, very first time I had sex. It was in kindergarten. It was in kindergarten. <laughs> oh, they combined. Guy's they name, dovetail. Guy's name was Gus. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, <laughs> so I was ha- the girl that was, I was seventeen, I think, and she was sixteen, and she was not a virgin, but she, I was. But she's right. like, she asked, "Are you a virgin?" I'm like, "I'm like, of course not." Well, er, no, yeah. And no like, I had a buddy that, that was like ta- on a good tear. He was like a, kind of a ladies' man that was in the same grade as me yeah. in my high school, and he was like, so she'd be like, "Oh, what have you done?" So I would take his stories, 
that he told me <laughs> and tell her the stories as I, if I was the person because I was too embarrassed to just say I was a virgin, which would have been the best thing I could have told her. Yes. Him. And then it was New Year's. She wanted to have sex for the first time. We were having sex together. We're going up the stairs. As I'm walking up the stairs, I realize, wait a minute, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, I know all the things I've said I've done. done. No, I, don't, I don't even know how to do them. Yeah, I didn't at one, any point that I didn't actually ask him about real actual details. <laughs> I just had the right? words. Yeah. Like, oh, yo, you had sex. Oh, I had sex. Right, you know. So then I I tried to have sex and I don't I I don't I I released right away. Like, <laughs> no, like I don't even I don't even think I got I don't think I lost my virginity. I didn't even. I didn't, even. I didn't like I didn't I didn't even get in there. And oh, soul crushing yeah, embarrassment. It was aw- yeah, and it was awkward because I didn't even know what to do. So I just kind of like laid on top of her still <laughs> and didn't know, like, like, because I didn't understand sex. I'm like, okay, now what? Do I just, so I awkwardly like rolled off of her. And then uh, that was the last time I ever saw her, I think. <laughs> no, I, I dated for another week, but it was very embarrassing. Uh, excellent. Patrick Capolino. You are um, up, my friend. I'm not. I'm not easily embarrassed. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's just because I'm dead inside <laughs> to some extent, but no, it's like anything that's embarrassing that like doesn't have a real consequence. I'm right. not really bothered by where it's just right. like ah, brush it off. Yeah. It's fine. But uh, but something that that stands out that's been embarrassing also because there was a real life consequence to it right. was uh, have you done that thing where you uh, are texting you want to text someone about someone but you sent it to that person oh, yeah. I did that with a to a boss like oh. uh, <laughs> a few oh. years ago and it was like a not a very nice text and I thought I was sending it to my dad or something uh, but I sent oh. it right to the per- and as soon as it, that sound that <laughs> you're like oh no the panic yeah and, and there were consequences but, there yeah. were consequences were there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there was no, there was no talking my way out of it. Like, oh, they didn't. No. Like, it was very clear what I was saying. I've never done it, but I've had that done about me twice, <laughs> twice, twice. In my same life. person? No, different oh. people. Same Who hates office. You? Everyone that worked with me in my whole life hates me. <laughs> That's the truth. Your, your old job? Your old job? When I was a banker, like uh, I was a really uptight ass or uh, a jerk store. Okay. Yeah, you can say ass. I can say ass yeah. jerk store. Yeah, absolutely. That's Whatever really that meant. Natural one. Yeah, uh, but you know, I was what, what did not you a nice do person. at the bank? I lent money to farmers. Okay, like, I get, okay. I did, like, so, Morgan. And sometimes you got to be a hard ass, right? I mean, sometimes you got to. No, the farmers kind of didn't mind me. Uh, like, I would always try to get them money because that's how I got paid, right? Oh, so it was your. So they liked me. Your managers. It was everybody who right. said, told me no that didn't like me. Or everyone I told to do work because I. I I, I, I'm like a, a maniac when I work, you know? Okay. So, like, I'm too intense. There's, like, yeah. an intensity that comes off me. And so everyone thinks I'm yelling, too. Yeah. Like, my regular voice, people think I'm yelling, which works on stage, but in yeah. real life, it doesn't work at all. People hate you. Know, it, are you yelling now? <laughs> no. <that's what> I <laughs> mean. But it is interesting, right? Because, I mean, uh, it was this, in, this sort of intensity. The intensity you didn't have when you were going up against little children in a horse race. No, I didn't. So, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've learned to be intense. <laughs> yeah, but the one guy, the, the, both times they were, it was like such power I felt when they sent me the message that I wasn't supposed to read, where yeah. it told me that uh, they, 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 I already knew they didn't like me, but like when I got to read what they were actually saying on my back, it was awesome, you know? And yeah. then you knew they felt so bad they're going to kiss your butt for a while, yeah. you know? Yeah. Ah, that's a great sense of power. <laughs> <laughs> That's a win. Yeah. That's a win. I'm surprised the boss didn't keep you employed, Patrick, just because he had you now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, were there expletives? Uh, expletives? Expletives in the uh, uh, in, in the text? Kind of. It was yeah, okay. just, It was more just like stuff that I could have personally. I could have talked to my boss about. Uh, and I didn't. Just the frustrations. Just like, yeah, it was bad. But it, and it's not as bad. I have a friend who recently found out his girlfriend was cheating on him through that same thing. Got a text oh, sent to him no. from her that was supposed to be to oh, the new man. guy. Oh, wow. That would be so but terrible. That's probably the worst. I always tell my wife, I'm like, because I trust her so much. Like, I'm so monogamous and I trust her. But, like, I mean, if I ever found out something like that, I would immediately oh. go to a prostitute. Like, <laughs> so fast, go to a prostitute. <laughs> and then their head the turns around, it's your wife. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, Jennifer oh, Aniston. No. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time. I thought, she never went to eye doctor I, school. I thought for sure <laughs> Manolis was going to lean in there and say it's not as much fun as you think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the uh, it's funny because we talk about uh, uh, an affair or finding out about an affair. And my daughter works at a restaurant here in Hamilton, and she was working. And this just happened just last week. And she, um, I guess, this guy was out with his wife, and then all of a sudden, this woman sitting at the bar, she walks over, and it turned out it was his mistress 
who mm. didn't know that he was married. <laughs> she comes out and she just lays it all out in the restaurant, loud as can be. He stands up to try to calm her. She slaps him across the face, walks away. The wife stands up. She slaps him across the face. What a great they show. leave. And then the two women come back in the bar and get drunk together and oh. share stories about the loser who just left. Isn't that great? Wow. So you see, guys, you got to be monogamous like Pete Van Dyke. Or you could get get laid by two different girls, and then they, and then they both leave you, and you get to have a whole, every other girl in the world as your choice. But what, what, what about what about the fact that you're you're going straight to a prostitute? You have no faith that, that you like you're going to be able to pick up a girl. No, I told you I have no moves. Yeah. That was the thing. At the he's very got no beginning. moves. He's, not, he's got, got moves. No moves. I have an he's old got, man. You know I never got. I never developed any moves. And he has no moves, but faded. he's got money. Can I kiss you? Yeah. Yeah, hey, baby. Oh, I'll try that. Hey, baby, I have a church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I can say. You, All right, one more topic, really fast. Go, Manolis. It's go time. Pete Van Dyke, our guest number in the studio. Two? Number two. All right, here we go. Oh, Twelve. Twelve. Sorry. Twelve. That looks a lot like number two. <laughs> you do that every time. Yeah, because of the squiggly All line. All right. And the... We've got to answer this one. We've got about four minutes left till we have to send everyone on, on to their Sweet weekend. Up. My brain's All right. slow, man. Uh, Manolis Antonis, one thing people wouldn't know about you. Uh, I can ride a unicycle. Is that Excellent. Anything? One thing, I can ride a unicycle. I would not have known that. Yeah, I, that's my, fantastic. My dad thought it'd be funny. Not funny. I I said to my dad when I was a kid, he's like, oh, I kind of want a unicycle. So my dad just found one and bought me one for when I was twelve years old, and then I just became that weird guy in the neighborhood that could that there was no one had a unicycle. <laughs> no, all no, right. So no. I, all, except the once, circus clown down the yeah, street. Yeah. So every once in a while, you saw me just going down to sort of I'm going to Friday store <laughs> to get some freezies on my one wheel bike. And with my protruding eye, because I because remember I have that I have that Igor eye, so I have an Igor eye, and I'm on a unicycle with a with a blue freezy in my mouth. Yeah, I was not popular. It, was not, it didn't make me. I realized I thought you know you know what everybody's gonna think I'm so cool. No one thought no, I was. No, I, I was just more of a weirdo. Oh, Patrick Capolino, one thing people wouldn't know about you. Mm, I have a pilot idol cyst. <laughs> oh wow! Do you know what that is? I have no idea, but uh, it doesn't sound good, brother. It's a it's a little hole at the end of my tailbone where my tail should have been. Really? You, you yeah. can't use my unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? And so, it, like it's an actual par- it's kind a, of opening. It's kind an of? Evo- evolutionary thing, apparently, from what yeah. I understand. I don't know. But yeah. it, uh, that freaks people out a little bit. It's uh, no, it's it's really small, but when it gets infected, it's not nice. Oh wow! All right, it starts to look like Igor with the blue tongue. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> Pete Van Dyke. One thing people wouldn't know about you that you're never coming back on the show again. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't know. Uh, I'm more involved than Patrick. That's what I, <laughs> I had no idea about that. But uh, something wh- strange people don't know about you. Geez, strange. Yeah. Uh, something weird. Uh, when I was a kid, I trained my brain to to think as many different trains of thought as you could. Do you know really? what I mean? So like if I would just like count to 10 and then say the alphabet and then sing a song and you oh. try to do it all in your head at the same oh, time. that is awesome. Because I lived on a farm and there's nothing to do. <laughs> I right? just drove myself <laughs> insane. You just had to think of stuff. But now it's a real, it's a real uh, uh, disadvantage in life to have that because there's it? too many oh, trains. Because oh, you, you, you can think multiple things and then you're not concentrating on the one. And, yeah, and that's yeah. what happened when I left uh, my banking job is that I, I could do anything I wanted to because I was done, right? Anything in the world. Well, that's everything to think about, and that's too much. <laughs> and I ended up losing my mind. Yeah. I had everything to think about. Well, that is what we're going to leave you folks to think about for the weekend. Uh, thank you so much to Pete Van Dyke. Remember, live from the Dutch Hall, that's the name of the podcast. Once a week it gets posted. Uh, you can get it on iTunes, or you can watch the video version on YouTube and see his cute mug. <laughs> Apparently, the only way he's getting the ladies. Uh, Pete, thank you so much for dropping in, man, coming in from Delhi. Oh, it was a pleasure. I really had fun. We look forward to visiting your church and having some laughs there. Uh, Manola Santanos, as usual, thank you, sir. Thank you. Patrick Capolino. Thank you. thank you. Excellent. We'll be back next Friday for another edition of Friday at 420. Uh, don't forget you can go to funny820.com to hear previous episodes of the show. And until we see you in seven days, thanks for tuning in to Funny 820 and have an awesome weekend.